I got started at Cabrillo. I started at Cabrillo College. I got started at Cabrillo. Hi, my name's Tony Kakachi, and we're here today at Specialized Bicycles, the most award-winning bicycle company in the world. In reality, I'm actually fascinated with the way everything works. How about you, Roxanne? Do you like the way things work? Are you kidding? Tony, I drove my parents nuts asking them how things worked. So they finally told me, go ask an engineer. And that's what we're doing today. Hi, my name is Roxanne Morris. Today, you, me, and Tony are going to visit with a whole bunch of engineers and ask a lot of questions. Questions like, what kind of things do engineers do, and what is their job like? Are there different types of engineers? Where do they work? And what kind of skills and education do they need? What do they learn, and how do they apply what they have learned? Let's go in and talk to Jeremy. And I'll catch up with you later. Jeremy, good to see you. Great to see you too, Tony. Welcome to Specialized Bicycles. Thanks, man. We're happy to be here. So as an engineer, how do you approach the design process for a bike? Um, the, a bike's a pretty complicated piece of machinery. Something like this here has a lot of working parts, a lot of moving parts, and also a lot of structural parts to it. For instance, when we're in the laboratory and we set up a fatigue test, one of the tests we do we call head tube fatigue, where we fixture the bike as if it's going to be ridden, and there's, there's weight on the bike, and you're leaning on the handlebars, so the, the wheel is being moved back and forth in addition to up and down constantly. After simulating 10 years of, of hard riding, a little crack will form right about here. We do destructive testing on every product we make. Uh, we break a lot of things here, but it's good. You learn from breaking stuff. If it fails the test, that's not a bad thing, actually. It just means that you're through the first phase of design. Before we go, can you tell me, how did you get started in engineering? Well, sure. I've always been interested in engineering. I just didn't know it until I ended up at Cabrillo. And the final project at the end of the year was an edible scale. And uh, that's really what got me hooked and made me know that I wanted to be an engineer. This is Joanne Penzardi and Karen Grappi, and they are both engineering instructors here at Cabrillo. Joanne and I always put a design project into each engineering class because it really helps students get do some hands-on experience. And there's a big gap between what you can imagine working and what you can actually make work in reality. This group actually had an uh, electrical uh, connection right here, which launched a rocket off the top. <laughs> When we started, uh, we had no idea what we were going to make. So we just sat down and started uh, uh, bringing up ideas, and we all had uh, different ideas. Like for instance, uh, Amy wanted to make uh, something that would do art. So she came up with, oh, we should put like little brushes that spin and spill paint. And we thought that was a great idea. So now we had to incorporate that into the whole specs of the project. We're here at Plantronics, a leading manufacturer of lightweight headsets located right here in Santa Cruz. Today we're going to talk to Cabrillo alum Andy Ward to learn about acoustics engineering. Let's go. It's nice to meet you. Hi Tony, it's a pleasure. Always nice to meet a fellow Cabrillo graduate. Right on. So tell me a little bit about Plantronics and what your role is here. Well, Plantronics is a worldwide company headquartered here in Santa Cruz. One of the things that we uh, make a lot of are these office telecommunication systems. This essentially replaces a telephone handset and allows you to use your handset um, um, in your office so you can work hands-free. Um, hands-free is one of the big things um, um, that we promote here at Plantronics. Steve, can you tell us a little bit about what we do in this chamber? The head and torso simulator is a tool we use for uh, electroacoustic measurements. So these measurements enable us to determine the performance of a product as we work on it. So as I rotate this, you can see that uh, the product is mounted on a rubber ear. Inside this rubber ear, there's a microphone. This microphone is designed in combination with the rubber ear to mimic the properties of a human ear. Andy, I'm curious, how did you get interested in engineering? And also tell me why you like it. It's always been fascinating to me. How does a microphone work? What does a speaker do? You know, how does that, how do those grooves, and I'm dating myself here, but how do those grooves on a long playing record get translated into sound that you hear? So Andy, where did you get started engineering and what kind of education did you get? 
Uh, well, I started taking courses at Cabrillo College. I went back to school at a somewhat later age, and the foundation of uh, the foundation of knowledge that I learned at Cabrillo was really key to my success there. Andy, it's really nice to meet you. Thank you for your time. You're welcome, Tony. I'm glad you could come to Plantronics and we could show you what we do here. Thank you. Let's check in with Roxanne. So what exactly are you doing on the computer? I'm using a software called Pro Engineer to design a pulley that we're using on a engineering project this year. So how does this program help you as an engineer? Well, as an engineer, sometimes you focus too much on the big picture. This program allows you to design each individual part and then put it all together and you're able to see the picture as a whole. So we're here at MESA, and MESA stands for Mathematics, Engineering, and Science Achievement. If you're looking for an aspiring engineer, this is most likely the place where you'll find them. So what would you like to know? As you know, we are here investigating engineering as a possible career choice. And we were wondering what kind of training and what kind of education is needed to become a good engineer. Why did you become an engineer? Well, that's a good question. Um, I actually, I love solving problems and fixing things. And the engineering major teaches you how to fix pretty much anything. The instructors teach us how to break down problems and how to create solutions. And it's a ton of work with lots of challenges. Everyone, from instructors to students to teacher aides, help create a sense of close community. Is that why you all spend so much time at Mesa? Yes, Mesa is a huge part of that community. We come here, tutor each other, help each other, and egg each other on to succeed. We're here at UCSF Trauma Institute. So the Trauma Institute, we work with a lot of surgeons and outside companies to test different products or surgical techniques that the surgeons or the outside companies would like to use. This is a high cycle fatigue tester for spines that we're using in the lab. Uh, this will test to do like total disc replacements are a big thing in orthopedics right now. And the engineering support, once the engineering companies come up with a product and then bring it to our lab to do cadaveric testing. So this, this piece would be placed in here and then we would run that through through whatever testing. So this is, would be bending in this direction. So why did you choose Cabrillo? Teachers just taught how I thought classes should be taught and I really started to perform a lot better at Cabrillo. It got me more excited about engineering. I take it you think highly of Cabrillo instructors. Absolutely. Even compared with professors from Berkeley, some of my best professors have been from Cabrillo. In terms of caring about students, they're above and beyond a lot of the professors that I've had at UC Berkeley. So why are you so passionate about cycling? Well, I really love to ride my bike, but then I started realizing how much it can help the environment if one person rides their bicycle as opposed to driving a car. Recently, I started working at a local engineering firm, Fall Creek Engineering, and there I've been able to apply some of what I've learned and also go further in, into water resources engineering and environmental engineering and, and learn how the basics apply to the more complicated, specialized areas of engineering. So Joanne, we talked to several different engineers who got their start at Cabrillo, and what is it exactly about Cabrillo's engineering program that makes it stand out? Well first, Cabrillo is the only community college in the Tri-County area that offers a full lower division engineering program, which means the students take their first two years at Cabrillo, which consists of math and science and engineering and some general ed, and then they transfer to their university as full juniors. Second, the class size at Cabrillo in the engineering courses are very small, which means the faculty and the students get to know each other really well, the students get to know each other very well, so there's a community of students that really uh, support each other to be successful in the class. While the engineering students are at Cabrillo, they could get internships and scholarships. Before Karen and I taught at Cabrillo, we worked as engineers in industry. So we have strong ties with the local industry. And many of our past students, after they got their bachelor's degree, came back to Santa Cruz County to work as engineers. So they also provide internships. And they're the major source of donations for scholarships. And lastly, our students are very well prepared when they leave Cabrillo, and they do amazingly well at the transfer university. So it sounds like engineers really get their hands in just about everything. Well, you know, Tony, if you listen to your iPod, if you drive your car across a bridge, you turn on the water to brush your teeth, say you need your knee replaced, any of these things engineers have had a hand in. Matter of fact, I can't think of anything that we do in our daily lives that isn't touched by 
it's engineers in some way. Thanks, Joanne and Karen. It's great to be back home at Cabrillo. We saw the engineers work in different industries, doing an exciting variety of different things, from designing more efficient bicycles to saving people's lives. Cabrillo provides a serious learning environment with a lot of support and a sense of community, which is crucial for a challenging degree like engineering. Thank you for joining us. We hope you learned a lot. So the next time you have a problem that you'd like to solve or figure out how something works, what are you going to do? Become an engineer!